Hi, I'm Ernie Zor, and in this video, I'm going to show you some computer tips that I think you'll find useful in your law office. You know, one of the nicest things in technical support is when I give someone a new tip and it makes their life a little bit easier, and I can tell from their voice that they're pleased as heck about it. Couple this feel good feeling with the fact that these days videos are often considered a more digestible format than books and making a YouTube video of some of our better law office computing tips promised to be a swell idea. By the way, all these tips work on Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 10, and some of them will even work on a Mac, and I'll try to remember to let you know which ones those are as we go along. If you consider yourself a rookie computer user, you'll find every one of these tips can be a time saver. If you're a veteran, you might find different or easier ways of doing things that you already knew how to do. So I think there might be something for everybody in this video. Let's see. Number one, half snap screens. Let's say you need to compare two places on your hard drive or you want to copy a file from one location to another. Here's one of my favorite tips with two different windows on your screen click and drag the title bar of one off to the left side click and drag the title bar of the other off to the right side let's try it let's get two windows up here we'll bring a word pad and a notepad I'll drag one off to the left grabbing its title bar the other to the right and you see how nicely they divided themselves. Incidentally, you could even, I think you can even drag and drag this text from one side. No, I guess not. Okay. Well, you can do that in, uh, I think you could do that if you had Word open, but I, I just had Notepad open. But it is a great thing, and it works with, it, it works just as well with File Explorer if you have two windows open and, and in that instance you could drag a file from one to the other I think I'll try that here's two I'm gonna drag one to the left one to the right now I can grab this file and drag it over to here yeah there we go I can drag it and drop it over there. I don't want to do that, but you can do it. And that's uh, half snap screens. Number two, quarter snap screens. This next trick is a variation of the one you just saw. You can do the same thing with four windows by dragging each app window to a corner. It's the same as what I just showed you, only you're splitting four apps into four equal parts of the screen. Unfortunately, here I'm using a Windows 7 computer, and, and this tip only works on Windows 10. And just to let you know, this is the only tip that doesn't work in all versions of Windows. Three, select all. Control A. Hold the control key down while tapping the letter A and you'll select everything. Think of A for all. Watch. I'll get something on my screen here with text in it. And um, now I'm going to select everything by hitting control A. That is very handy tip everything selected and now I can copy and paste it anywhere I want the thing is that control A works in a lot of contexts uh, here I'm just selecting text in WordPad but you can also and I'll do this let me let's go back to this window in file explorer I can hit control A and select all the files now I can drag or copy them to another location You'll be surprised at all the different places in Windows that Control A works. Four, clear desktop, Windows key plus D. Now here's one that I use every day. 
First, what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a few windows up on my screen to kind of clutter things up. Now, if I wanted to get back down to my desktop because I wanted to click on an icon or something, I have five or six items up here open at the same time, and I would need to close each one of them down to get back down to the desktop. What I can do instead is hold the Windows key down and press the D, letter D key, and everything clears back down to my desktop. Where did everything go? Well, you don't have to worry about losing anything because if you hit Windows D, everything pops back to the way it was. Five, super find window key plus F. Now while I'm on the subject of the Windows key, you can hold the Windows key down and tap the letter F and you'll bring up the search window, which I'm going to do right now. Now what I like about this command is that it searches not only the, the file names, but the file contents. And I'll confess to you that I was never able to get the search command to work consistently like that using the little search box in the, cor or in the corner of Explorer. And I read articles about where you would go into the registry editor and make changes and crazy. Why, why shouldn't it just do that automatically or, or make the selection easy? Well, it is pretty easy with this one. Uh, you just hit the Windows key plus the F and you got your, your window up there and I started a, a pretty long search but oop, there it is everything that used the word cycle or that had the word cycle in the um, in the article or the file so uh, that's that let's see six Google Chrome, open multiple pages on startup. From my research, Google Chrome is by far the most popular browser, and it's probably the best of what's out there. So this tip is for Chrome, and if you don't have Chrome set up this way, you're going to find this tip very convenient. When you start Chrome, remember, it's not the early 2000s anymore, when you automatically opened your own home page, now you can have as many home pages as you want, and you can have them all open simultaneously, courtesy of tab browsing. So in Chrome, first thing you do, open the dot menu and select settings. That's right up here in the corner, the dot menu, settings. On later versions of Chrome than the one I'm using, the menu is in the same place in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, once you get used to once you get to the settings screen it doesn't matter which version of Windows you're using because in fact this is a Chrome trick and it works on Mac computers as well you're gonna scroll down to the on startup section right here and you'll click on the open a specific page or set of pages which I already have selected and you see I've got Google in there so every time I start up Chrome one tab opens up with Google now let's add a new page like I'm going to do here and I'm going to say, let's see if we have to type the whole thing in, I'll put puritasbrings.com I might need the HTTPS, let's see what happens it put it in there automatically, so now let's shut I'm going to clear my screen I did it that with Windows D. Hey, how about that? I'm following my own tips. Okay, what was I going to do? Okay, I'm going to start up Chrome. And now, when it starts, it should start with my Google page, which I had in there, and the Pure Springs tab right there. Now imagine, you could have all kind of them. I, I set it up so that it's almost like um, the sections of the Sunday newspaper. I've got one weather tab, I have one sports tab, I have my blank Google search tab, and that's uh, and, and the Pure to Spring software tab, of course, and that's my bare minimum. I'm, I'm sure you'll have ideas um, you know, of your own about what's convenient to have up there, but that is a cool tip. Seven, 
7. Google Chrome pinning tabs. Here's one that's kind of new for me. It makes managing web pages easier when you're working with bunches of them. I don't have a bunch open right now, but what you can do is you can right click on any tab and select pin to tab and the tab will shrink to the icon uh, to an icon size on the far right of the tab bar. I'll do that right here. Let's click on the Puritus Springs pin tab. You see it became a tab here. So you can imagine that if you had a lot of them and they were taking up your whole screen with, you could actually put probably a half dozen of them in the space of what would fit one and switch back and forth between them. A little easier than cruising along on the top. If you have, uh, the more pages you have, the more hand, the, the handier it probably is. If you're doing um, things like research, hey, who does that in a law office? Or your comparison shopping, you'll find it useful. Um, this is another tip that works because it's on Chrome. It works on Macs as well as Windows computers. Eight, turning a website into a desktop icon. This is a good trick, and it works with all versions of Windows and Macs, and I think it works in all browsers. If there's a website that you visit with regularity, but maybe you don't want to make it a default startup page, you can turn it into a desktop icon, and that way when you want to start it up, you just double-click on the icon rather than to start up your uh, browser and then open the particular page. You can do it all in one step. Watch. I'm going to take this Google, and I, I'm just going to drag it. I highlighted it. And I, I'm going to just drag it here and drop it. And what it becomes is a desktop icon. Now, if I have Explorer closed, I double click on the Google icon. And what starts up? Google. Goes up to my Google page. Look, it even, it even did my startup pages there. Very easy to do. Just select the URL and drag and drop it on the desktop. There is such a thing as a favicon. It's the icon that appears on a web pages tab when you're browsing. You see one here? Google has this G. When you've got your browser all set up with bookmark icons, as we have along the top, let's see, I, okay, here's the bookmark bar right here. I can save a lot of space by right clicking on the favicon. And um, like probably if you had about seven or eight of these things in here, you'd run out of space. But I could fit, who knows, 20 or 30 by right-clicking on them, selecting Edit, and then just simply deleting the name. Now watch, Chase Bank is going to become just the symbol for Chase. So if you know your symbols, you're in good shape. Uh, if you don't, <laughs> you might want to maybe just edit them to a shorter name which I've done that in the past too so that that works equally well so long as you recognize the icon you'll save a lot of space what you will notice eventually is that not all sites have favicons and they end up with Chrome's default icon which isn't so much help naturally because this is a Chrome tip it also works on a Mac Ten, bypassing the recycle bin. This last tip is, is one that you might find yourself using all the time. When you want to delete a file, here's how it goes. I'll, maybe I'll get that up on my screen so you can check it out. Okay, there we go. I right-click on the icon. I say delete. Windows says, are you sure you want to delete and send it to the recycle bin? I click on yes, and that's what happens. Well, that's great. Nothing wrong with the recycle bin. But sometimes you know you want to delete the file. You don't want the verification to come up. Do you really want to delete? Yes. You don't want to waste time doing that. And, and you don't even want to waste uh, space in the recycle bin sending it there. And what you can do is when you right click on it, instead of just selecting delete, you hold the shift key down and you select delete. 
and what happens is the file is not only deleted without needing the verification, but it doesn't even go to the recycle pin, the recycle bin. You want to delete it, it's deleted. Incidentally, on a Mac, this works with the option key. And uh, very, very nice tip. Well, that's my 10 tips. Now, if you thought these tips were helpful, Pure to Springs has a book called The Best of Law Office Computing. It's a collection of all the best tips and the most interesting articles from Law Office Computing Magazine and our monthly email newsletter. Like the tips you just saw, it's not about Pure to Springs products. It covers all subjects related to using computers in law offices. It could even save you money because there's information about free software in there. And there are other utility apps that are especially useful in law offices. You can get the ebook from Amazon for only $9 and the paperback for only $12. Considering its usefulness, it'll be the best $12 investment you can make in your law office. Well, I want to sincerely thank you for watching and I hope you visit our YouTube channel again. And until you do, I wish you all the best. Take care.